by VC, Dark Dove, uh, back with you again. Um, just to let you know that this update will, will uh, consist entirely of CDs. So if, if, if you've absolutely no interest in CDs, um, you can switch off now, but um, we'll be showing some very interesting stuff. Um, a couple of online purchases, plus a big um, charity shop haul. Um, first off, I'm going to start off with, um, this is a reissue uh, by a band who, um, um, yeah, the, the, their back catalogue has been very difficult to um, to pick up because of um, a lack of reissues, but that group is Coil. Um, Coil, um, electronic um, industrial duo led by um, John Balance and Peter Sleazy Christopherson, um, Peter Christopherson, formerly of Throbbing Gristle, um, group formed in the wake of Throbbing Gristle splitting up. Um, this was their their very final album. This is called the, Na the, the Ape of Naples. And this was released in 2005. Um, it was actually released a year after the death, the untimely death of John Balance, um, who died in an accidental fall, um, fell out of a window while inebriated. Um, so this was released a year after, after the official d dissolution of Coil. Um, it, it's widely regarded by many as, as one of their best albums. Um, um, uh, yeah, so it came out in 2005 originally, had even even CD editions of it had been extremely expensive, but it's been reissued on um, important records, who, it is an official reissue by the way, it's, it's not a bootleg, because I know that this has been heavily, you know, Coil stuff has generally been heavily bootlegged, but um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really that familiar with important records prior to this, but they have um, have reissued this. Um, yeah, so this album, some of the songs on this already appeared in different forms uh, on um, Backwards, which was an, an unreleased album, or a previously unreleased album recorded in the early 90s. And which was actually released for the first time last year by Cold Harbor uh, Records. Um, it's so, yeah. So this um, it's basically, um, uh, yeah. For those of you who aren't familiar with Coil, in it's quite dark, but uh, but there is a strange kind of. Um, of melody to this as well. There's a kind of a strong um, modern classical kind of an influence running through it. Um, very dark and disturbing lyrical themes. Um, un unusually, um, the, the very final track on this is, you know, a kind of an example of their kind of weird twisted humor. Uh, going up, uh, it's actually a cover of the theme music to the um, 70s British sitcom Are You Being Served? Now it's kind of almost unrecognizable but it is a kind of um, weirdly kind of strange dark ambient electronic cover of that um, theme music but um, yeah so as I said before Coil's back catalogue has long been out of print um, but they're, they're slowly and surely being reissued. But um, oh, by the way, th this is actually a second-hand copy because even though this only came out uh, back in September, I spotted a second-hand copy for sale um, on Discogs. So um, somebody, well, for some for reasons best known to themselves, were selling it. So I got it fairly cheap. So I got it cheaper than um, you know I would have gotten to buy it new. So. Moving on a bit, um, <clears throat> as I said in my last video, or I think maybe the video before that, um, I ha I got a partial um, uh, refund on, on a on an album that I bought on Discogs. So with that, with a little bit of 
revenue in my PayPal account, I picked up uh, two CDs. Um, one, oh, sorry, first off, uh, this is something that was on my want list for a long time. Um, uh, David Byrne and Brian Eno, Everything That Happens Will Happen Today. This came out in 2008, and this was their first um, joint album since My Life in the Bush of Ghosts from 1981. Um, uh, yeah, so vinyl copies of this are very expensive, so I'm happy to, to, to have it on CD. But, um, yeah, this is quite different to... Um, Quite different to the Bush of Ghosts. It's more, much more song based. Um, it is a single, strange overtones. Uh, yeah, so th there's vocals from um, David Byrne on this, but um, yeah, it's one that that I hadn't gotten round to um, to getting on physical format. So um, I picked it up, nice, nice cheap copy online, uh, second hand. Um, Copy uh, appears to be a um, appears to be a promo as well. Uh, the, the the seller also had this, so I picked this up fairly cheaply as well. Uh, this is Black Widow by Lalo Schif Lalo Schifrin Lalo Schifrin, um, Argentine film soundtrack composer, probably best known for doing the music to. Um, Oh, was it Game of Death? Um, yeah, Bruce Lee's last movie. Anyway, um, so this 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 is a studio album which he brought out in 1976 on the CTI label. Um, it's not a soundtrack, even though it might, you know, to look at the, you know, the cover might kind of indicate that it is. But um, no, it's um. But there are there are individual pieces from various um, movie soundtracks here, uh, but it's great uh, funky, funky jazz kind of um. It does have a kind of a soundtrack feel to it. So um. Uh, that's Black Widow from Lalo Lalo, Lalo Schifrin. Um. <clears throat> okay. Now this next. Pick up. Uh, I spotted this in a, in a, in a local second-hand record shop. Uh, they've had a big stack of CDs in, and um, spotted this and grabbed it. Um, that is Gil Scott Heron and Brian Jackson, Winter in America. Uh, very hard to find Gil Scott Heron in the wild. Uh, certainly very hard to find him on on vinyl. So I thought. Uh, this will do nicely, even if it's even though it's on CD, because it's one that I've been looking for. So this came out in '74, and um, yeah, so um, this has uh, the bottle, and uh, some great um, spoken word pieces here from Gil Scott Heron, and um, music courtesy of um, Brian Jackson. So um, yeah. Excellent album. This um, uh, widely regarded by many as 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 one of his best. Winter in America by Gil Scott Heron and Brian Jackson. Okay, so next, uh, everything else I'm going to show you now, uh, I found in a local charity shop, uh, charity shop or thrift shop, uh, whatever you want to call them. Um, Generally a good source for CDs. Now this is a pretty good, um, pretty good haul here. There's some pretty nice stuff. Um, this actually was sealed, so this was actually brand new. Um, but this is by a composer called Lub Lubimir Lubimir Melnik, Lubimir Melnik, who I have to say I didn't know much about him beforehand, but um, he's a a uh, Canadian composer of Ukrainian extraction, and this is kind of um, this is piano-based modern classical, a uh, bit of a Philip Glass um, feel to it, and it's called oh yeah, it's called sorry, it's called um, it's called Rivers and Streams. Uh, the opening track, Parasol. It, it, uh, it's kind of very fast piano. It's like he he performs the piano himself on these, and um, 
he has a very very fast um, very fast style so um, but it's it's quite yeah this is interesting as I said it does have a bit of a Philip Glass um, uh, feel to it so it's um, Lubomir Melnik Rivers and Streams and this oh yeah this came out on Erased Tapes uh, Erased Tapes it's quite an interesting label um, uh, so um, yeah so and it was actually brand new it was it was sealed so um, I don't know why maybe it was unsold stock from a record shop or something again staying on modern classical piano music uh, this is by George Crumb and this is Macro Cosmos Volume 1 and 2. Uh, George Crumb, um, I've seen various... Um, there's one album in particular that I've seen people show online from time to time called um, Ancient Voices of Children. Um, an American composer, um, still, still around I think. Um, um, yeah, this is very much kind of avant-garde, um, cla modern, classical. Um, I don't know, was this... Yeah, this was recorded in 1982 in Germany. Um, Robert Grosslos on piano. So, yeah, so it's very kind of... Um, yeah, there's all very strange ti song ti pieces have rather strange titles, like... Um, um, Pastoral from the Kingdom of Atlantis, circa 10,000 BC, Taurus. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of an indication. So it's, it's kind of unusual stuff. Um, interesting, interesting find. Um, okay, now, here's a composer who I always grab whenever I see him. And that is Arvo Part. Um, Arvo Part, uh, famous Estonian composer. Um, yeah, so this is this is on HMV Classics. This is a, basically a kind of a, a compilation, a compilation uh, CD. So Tabusa Tabu Raza, one of his better known pieces. Plus um, Spiegel Spiegel and Spiegel is also here. That's probably probably his single most famous piece, I think. Um, so yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, Freyertes for for violin and piano. And um, I don't come across him too often in the wild, so I usually grab Annabelle Part whenever I see him. Um, okay, now, next up. Now, this is um, Keith Jarrett, uh, one of his, um, uh, this is on ECM, originally came out in 1974. This is called Belonging. And so line up here we have Jan Gerbarek, um, Pale Danielson, and Jan Jan Christensen. One of those albums that recorded um, with uh, European um, musicians. Um, yeah, this is um, this is pretty good. I suppose you know, in some ways he is sometimes he's kind of uh, especially um, Jan Gerbarek's. Um, um, Saxophone does tend to kind of over dominate things a little bit at times, but but still this is a pretty good album from from Keith Jarrett and uh, definitely um, well worth picking up. Now the uh, the next two next two CDs are by um, an Irish musician. Well, I don't know what you describe him as a composer or what, but. Um, uh, Stano is the name that he records under. Uh, I think his real name is um, John Stanley, but he, he emerged from the Dublin post-punk scene in the early '80s, and um, uh, kind of went on to to carve a career as a as a composer of kind of sort of ambient, experimental, slightly veering on the industrial side. These are two um, albums, fairly recent albums by him. Um, this is Blind Sound, and uh, this came out in 2010, and this is the Decoder, and this came out only in 2014, just two years ago, and um, yeah, so both of these are kind of, 
Um, yeah, the, the, both of them are entirely instrumental. Now they're both kind of veering on the kind of um, hard to classify them really, but th there's a heavy use of, get, of electric guitar in here. Uh, this this one in particular has an almost kind of industrial rock kind of a sound, um, blind sound, but um, uh, yeah, so quite interesting. Um, I don't have much by him uh, in my collection, so I was quite pleased to pick those up. Now this is a very interesting find. Uh, this is a double live double CD by um, Stella Vander. Now Stella Vander, she is the wife of Christian Vander of um, Magma, the French um, uh, avant-garde progressive um, band. So this is a live recording that was made in Paris in 1991, but uh, this is only released in 2011, uh, 20 years later. Uh, it's not available on um, vinyl as far as I know, but um, it's quite an extensive lineup here. There's quite a few members of Magma included in this, including Christian Vander himself, who contributes um, uh, drums and uh, percussion. So, um, yeah, um, Stella Vander herself has an absolutely amazing voice. Um, the, yeah, to how to describe this kind of avant garde chanson jazz. Um, uh, I, I don't have very much by Magma or by kind of Christian Vander, Stella Vander related stuff, but this um, this is a very nice find. So, um, um, and um, because you, you just don't really tend to come across any kind of magma related stuff in the wild, uh, very you know, very very hard to find generally. So, I'm uh, very pleased with this. Um, it's kind of la la later stage, um, you know, early 90s, but um, uh, definitely if you're a fan of mag magma, this is definitely well worth. Oh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> it's called um. Passage du Nord Quest, and it is on. It's on a label called A A K. Um, A A K T. Uh, I presume I presume it's a French label. So, final find from that same charity shop is um. Uh, this is on Naxos, which is a. Uh, Naxos Jazz. Uh, Naxos is a, a budget label which primarily releases classical, but uh, this is on its jazz um, sub label. And this is Havana Flute Summit. So, this is um, a compilation of um, Latin jazz influenced um, music. Um, oh, yeah, I think there were. Oh, yeah, it was, it, it was actually all recorded in 1996 in Cuba. Um so none of the I'm not sure if any of the names on this I'm really familiar with, but um this is uh, yeah, this is really really good um kind of Cuban influenced jazz. Um as as the title indicates, there's a big use of flute uh on here, so um quite a nice find. Okay, so that's it. Um, I'll be back to the vinyl for my next um, update, so um, uh, do keep your eyes peeled for that. And until then, uh, thanks for watching.